Today I am going to talk about the op amp differentiator. The differentiator takes a signal that changes linearly with time. So here is time on the horizontal axis and voltage on the vertical axis. And if we have equal intervals in time here, and we have an input voltage that changes linearly with time. So there is our input voltage, meaning that let's say after one millisecond, it changes by one millivolt. After two milliseconds, it changes by two millivolts. And so the change is linear, same amount of time, same amount of voltage. And if we plot it out, we get this straight line. The differentiator takes that input and gives us a steady voltage. So for example, if our slope is this particular angle, where if we have after one millisecond, one millivolt, two milliseconds, two millivolts, we get, oh, let's say, oh, let's say we get, um, I'm gonna make this volts over here. Let's say we get one volt with that particular slope. But let's say that the slope was steeper, still linear, but now after one millisecond, we get two volts. After two milliseconds, we get four volts. We would get a higher DC voltage over time. So it takes a voltage that changes over time, but changes linearly to a steady output voltage. So to understand how the differentiator works, we have to first take a quick look at the op amp inverting amplifier. So here is our operational amplifier. It is an integrated circuit and that's the symbol for it. I like to have my non-inverting input on the bottom and my inverting input on the top. It works best for me. Here's our output. There is our two inputs. And for the inverting amplifier, the non-inverting input is going to go to ground and we're going to have our feedback resistors and our input is going to be there. So there is our complete inverting amplifier and quickly how it works. There's our output. Let's say I have equal resistors here, 1K, 1K. Now let's put one volt here. So there's one volt in, what's going to happen to the output? Well, remember that an op amp changes its output to whatever it takes to make the two inputs equal. So this is zero volts by definition, meaning that we are measuring all of our voltages from that point. So that's where our black probe of our voltmeter is or oscilloscope or whatever. And I'll just get that out of the way, but that's zero volts. This output is going to be whatever it takes to make this also zero volts. So if I put one volt here, voltages are going to change. This voltage is going to do whatever it takes to make this zero volts. So what is this going to settle down to to make this true? Well, we have equal resistors here, so we have to have equal voltage across them because this is a series circuit. This is not a branch here, so there's only one possible path for current to go. It cannot go into the op amp because the impedance is too high, so it's a series circuit, one current path. And so the two resistors have to have the same voltage. So we have plus one volt here and zero volts there, so that's going to be one volt difference between there and there. And it went from plus to zero. And so we have to have one volt here and it has to continue going down in voltage. We can't go back up because currents don't flow that way. So we have one volt, zero volts, we lose another volt, so this will have to be minus one volt. So the output will have to be minus one volt to balance this out. And let's see if that works out. Let's erase those just to reduce the clutter. So we have plus one volt, minus one volt, that gives us a total of two volts across both resistors. Two volts across 2K gives us one milliamp. So it's one milliamp of current flowing through there. One milliamp through one K is going to be one volt. Okay, we lose one volt. One milliamp through another K is going to be another volt. So we lose another volt, everything balances out. So it does exactly what it should. Don't be confused by the fact that it looks like there's no voltage here. Remember, zero volts is not the absence of voltage. It simply means that they're the same voltage and that's what op amps do. These voltages will always be the same. Right now they are zero because the op amp is pushing this voltage down. If this voltage goes up, it pushes this voltage down to compensate until that's zero. I have a video linked in the description below where I explain why this is always zero volts if that's confusing. But it's simply, if this voltage goes up, that voltage has to go down to compensate to make sure that stays the same voltage as that, which in this case is zero volts. So 
That's what the op amp does. Let's see if we increase this to two volts. Well, now we are going to have two volts between here and here, so two volts. So we start with two, we lose two, we have to lose two more, that'll become minus two volts. So whatever voltage we have here, we'll have the opposite polarity there. If this goes up, that goes down. If that goes down, this goes up. If this goes to minus two volts, this will have to go to plus two volts to equalize the seesaw, if you will, to make sure that that stays at zero volts. Okay, so that is the inverting amplifier. Now let's see what happens if we replace this resistor, let's get rid of our spurious voltages here, with a capacitor. Okay, let's start out with zero volts in. So what's the voltage across the capacitor? We're going to assume that it's a discharged capacitor, meaning the voltage on this side is the same as the voltage on that side. Remember that voltage is always a differential. So if I say zero volts, I'm only saying that the voltage is the same in the two places I'm comparing. So that's going to be no difference. So that's zero volts. And of course, that's equal to this voltage. So it's zero volts, zero volts, and there's no current flowing anywhere. So everything is zero volts. Well enough. Now let's change this to plus one volt. What is going to happen? Well, this has still has zero volts across it. So if I increase this to one volt, this has to jump up to one volt. What's the op amp going to do? It's going to drop this voltage to bring this back down to zero. So this will suddenly drop down to minus one volt. Well enough. Okay, that will bring this down to zero volts. So we have plus one and minus one bringing that back to zero volts. But what's going to happen? We're going to have a current flowing through that capacitor into the op amp and that capacitor is going to start charging. Well, what happens? Well, it charges, it's going to build up a voltage, which is going to push back against whatever current is flowing. So eventually this is going to charge up and this current is going to get less and less and less. So the op amp has to compensate less and less and less, and this is eventually going to go back to zero volts. So I put plus one volt here, that caused the op amp to jump to minus one volt to compensate, but the capacitor charged up and blocked the current, and this eventually went back to zero volts and we're back to this situation. But now there's one volt across the capacitor, positive to negative, but there's no current flow. So one volt, zero volts here, this is still zero volts, zero, 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 it, everything settles in to this being zero volts. So what happened? I put that one volt in, I'm gonna look at this over time, there's zero volts, and I saw that jump down to minus one volt, and then go back to zero. So let's, increase this to two volts. Well, the same thing's going to happen again. Now, if this goes up to two volts, that voltage is not going to change instantly, so it's going to drive this up. Now, there's still a one volt difference. So this goes up to two volts. I'm going to be losing a volt across there, so that's plus one volt. This is going to go to minus one volt to compensate, but the capacitor is going to charge again, and that voltage will go up, 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 until it becomes zero volts again, and everything is all balanced out again. And so when we change that to two volts, this is going to jump to minus one volt and go back to zero. What happens if we change this to plus three volts? Same thing happens again. This jumps up to plus one volt. This jumps to minus one volt to compensate. The output goes to minus one volt, but the capacitor charges and the voltage goes back up and settles in again at zero. Probably should have a little more of a slope there. So Every time I increase the voltage by one volt, I get a spike that goes to minus one volt, minus one volt, so there's one volt, two volts, three volts, but each time that spike goes to minus one volt to compensate. And if I did the opposite to negative voltages, these would just be positive pulses here. So every time I change the DC voltage here, I get a spike and it goes back to zero. What happens if I put a constantly changing voltage here? So I put a voltage that's constantly going up. Well, this voltage is going to go down to compensate. Now, if this voltage was steady, I'd get this capacitor would charge and this would go back to zero like we did here. But if I keep increasing this voltage, this one has to keep compensating. And if this voltage is going up at a steady rate, this has to compensate at a steady rate. So let's say I'm going up at one millivolt per millisecond 
there's our one millisecond, one millivolt. This is going to have to compensate by the same amount. And so instead of us getting a spike, let's just go over here and just say that's what happened here. It goes down, but since this has to keep on compensating, it stays down until such time that it can't compensate anymore. So this gets up to, let's say, well, there's plus 10, minus 10 volts. Well, when this gets up to plus 10 volts, well, it can't, it could go higher, but it's not going to do any good because this can't compensate anymore. And when it can't compensate anymore, we're going to get that again. So for as long as is possible, as long as this is changing in a linear rate, we will get a steady voltage on the output. And so as long as we don't ever reach this 10 volts, we could uh, make use of that. So we, we have a time limit to how long this will work. But as long as this is changing in a linear fashion, we will get a steady voltage here. So if that change is slower, going up fewer volts per second, I would get a lower voltage. So let's say we went back to zero. Now we're going to change it again, but a lower voltage this time. So it's changing at a lower rate. So we get a lower voltage on the output. Change it at a higher rate, we get a higher voltage on the output. But notice it's going negative instead of positive. So if we want to take a positive voltage and get a positive output, we'd have to go through an inverter. But you can see the point here. So the differentiator takes a voltage that is changing linearly over time, giving us a straight ramp, and turns that into a steady DC voltage as long as it can keep compensating. So what does a differentiator do? Uh, just off the top of my head, uh, one thing we could do is turn a triangle wave into a square wave. Is there a reason to do that? Perhaps. I don't know off the top of my head why I'd want to do that. But if we put a triangle wave in here where it constantly changes, that's going to give us a certain voltage. And then when that is going the other way, that's going to change back up. And when it goes back that way, I'm drawing over my drawing here, it's going to keep giving us a steady voltage on the way up, on the way down, on the way up, on the way down. So the differentiator could be used to turn a triangle wave into a square wave. If we put square waves into the differentiator, let's just redraw this real quickly. A little cruder of a drawing here, but there it is. Okay, if we put a square wave into here, what are we going to get? We're going to get a train of pulses out. So square wave, we get pulse out. And then when it changes polarity, we'll get a pulse like that. If we have a use for that, well, that's what it would do if we put a square wave in. So a triangle wave, triangle in equals square out. Reverse the polarity though, it's just, just to be real, let's do that. Triangle in, square out. Square in, pulses out. And what happens if we put a sine wave in? Now well, it's a little more complicated to explain, but what's going to happen is there's going to be a time delay. So if we put a sine wave in, we get a delayed sine wave by 90 degrees. And so we get a cosine wave out. And I should probably flip that over. A cosine out. So it just simply starts at a different time. So we start at zero. It's going to start at the, at the negative side. So sine wave in. cosine out. And that's what a differentiator will do for you. So voltage making a linear change over time, we get a steady voltage out. So the voltage out will tell us the slope of the input voltage. Or square waves in, we get spikes out. Or triangle in, we get a square wave out. And that's what a differentiator does. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.